Hey, welcome to an I Work For Him special event as we do this on Facebook Live. Actually, it's not gonna be live. We're gonna record it and put it out there on Facebook because we've been part of an amazing organization for so many years called the Christian Leadership Alliance. We got Tammy Heim joining us today from the Christian Leadership Alliance. She's one of the forefathers, uh, before mothers, I guess, the <laughs> four mothers of the digital conference. You're the first time, you're probably the first one in the country that's taken a regular conference and put it digital and get it all done in three and a half weeks. Tammy Heim, welcome to I Work For Him. So good to be with both of you. Thanks for doing this today. I love it. So tell us what's going on. Tell us, I mean, the every year, the Christian Leadership Alliance, which is an alliance of, well, you tell us, what is the Christian Leadership Alliance? Well, the Christian Leadership Alliance is um, a community of leaders that's existed. Actually, we just had our 44th birthday. Happy birthday. In March. And, um, you know, it really started because one man had a vision, Ted Engstrom, back in 1976, a, a vision about excellence and the importance of leaders investing the best of what God has given them into each other. Mm -hmm. And so in 1976, there was the first gathering of Christian leaders um, to learn about finance and to share again their best practices. And then the alliance was formed and it's met every year since then. So um, this is an unprecedented year because 2020 will not be the year now that we will be able to meet face to face and have that same kind of an exchange. In fact, this is the very week that we were all scheduled to be together. That's right. So um, we we're finishing up tonight. This is the deal. I know. I know. It would have it would have closed out tonight. And God had been moving all year. The theme of the conference was transform. And we just knew that he had such an important message for this time that actually I was full of anticipation. I thought this would be the most significant and important conference that we had ever been able to bring to our members. But, you know, clearly God had a different plan. And um, we were literally going through emergency procedures with the Hyatt. Um, at the time, Dallas had not reported any instances of the virus. And then by that afternoon, everything changed. Mm -hmm. And um, candidly, um, we were at a point we thought, well, this could be the end of Christian Leadership Alliance because we were so close to the release of that, you know, all our sunk costs were put into the event. We had no way what to do. And I thought, really, Lord, okay, if it's your will that we're a casualty of the coronavirus, we're just going to receive that or just show us what to do. And then God made a way instantly. Mm -hmm for us to convert this conference into a digital experience. And the more we got into it and the more we learned about it, we realized that this wasn't going to be an online learning experience. It was going to be an ecosystem of community. Ooh, that God would work. use for 90 days at a most critical time. So the fastest we could turn things around, I mean, 18 months of preparation, a tiny little window to get it converted. We saw the Alliance rally and, you know, for 44 years, we've said amazing things about the Alliance, right? That it's, you know, professional development, we're united, we're quitting, leaders really care about each other, but none of those things are ever real until they're tested. Right, absolutely. And I have been undone <laughs> by the, the faculty and the speakers and the leaders within the community that said, we're all in to do this. And, and here's the thing. All of the faculty, all those leaders are in the midst of this crisis right now. Right. They are leading in unprecedented times, but yet they said, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to sit in front of my computer and I'm going to give the very best of what I know and God has given me and I'm going to sow it into the life of whoever's listening. And Tammy, you're because not talking about three or four people. Tell no. how many people are you talking about that have, have 80. adjusted? Yeah. 80 leaders in this faculty have come together to make this happen, to make this pivot and switch. And then when I think about the timing, um, the conference is going to begin on May 4th online. And again, it'll be extended for 90 days. So if you think from May 4th, and actually the week before, people will be able to get in and set up their profiles and begin to engage. But in that window of time, I really believe that it is going to be among one of the most defining times in the history of Christian nonprofit organizations, because that's going to be a time when people are going to be, what is next? Yeah. So they're going to be able to be nourished by the content and the, the educational piece. But they're going to be in community. They can collaborate. I just feel like for such a time as this, this is God's plan A. 
and we get to be part of it and we get to be part of it. So let's just do another plug for the, uh, for the Christian Leadership Alliance, because people that are running a Christian nonprofit, this is something they need to be a part of, because this is all about helping Christian nonprofits operate with excellence. Yes. So do another plug on how people can get involved. And then we're going to, uh, if you're willing, Tammy, let's, you know, we've been interviewing tons of leaders that you've sent to us to do the Outcomes Conference podcast. Would you be willing to let us ask you those questions? Well, yes, yes, I would. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I would. Pressure or anything, just you know, right here. On, on if you'd have said no, there would have been serious issues. So good of thing course. you said yes. Of right. course, so, of tell, course. Tell and I know me. that those questions will come back to me as you ask them. So that's yeah. wonderful. So yes. Talk to the people out there that are involved with Christian nonprofits, whether they're a leader or a volunteer or on the board of directors of why they should get involved in the Christian Leadership Alliance, what it's going to add to them. Well, the ministry of the Alliance is all about the business of ministry. So if you think about it, there's disciplines that nonprofits need to know that look very much like what a for-profit might need to know. Mm -hmm. And it's really an issue of stewardship. So we work in the areas of executive leadership, board governance, um, finance, tax and legal, HR, marketing communications, donor development, and internet technology. And so if you think about it, that's what you would need in any situation, those areas, in order to steward well what God has given you. And that's our hope. That's our prayer. We want people to be proficient and competent in those places so that as God gives them resources in terms of the people that come to serve them or the finances that come in, that they take that so that they're ready for God to bless them with the opportunity to expand and have even more ministry. So we're a little bit different and we represent all types of ministries, which is also really mm -hmm. unique. I think when you come to an outcomes conference or you're involved in the community and you step back and you look at the ministries that are represented, it's almost like you're getting the warp and the weave of God's master redemptive plan, or at least a patch of it. Because these are organizations that sat in their churches and said, send me, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And they've developed these ways based on how God has called them but at the end of the day, what unites us is we all care about transforming the world for Jesus Christ. And in many ways, I think of the Alliance as part of what God's using to accelerate the coming of Jesus Christ, his second coming, because we're all about making him known and watching and creating disciples along the way so that more people can know him and love him and be part of what he's doing in the world. So people today. I know are leaning in right now and saying, okay, how do I get involved in this digital experience that will be a, um, a, a very unique once in a lifetime, maybe opportunity for them to do it in this way. How do people get involved if they're interested? Uh, they can go to outcomesconference.org. And on that landing page, they'll find out a little bit of what's happening. They'll see some of the keynote presenters. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be an opportunity to register. Now, if you're an Alliance member, there's a discounted rate for registration, both if it's an individual or if you want to bring a group. And we're strongly encouraging groups because we think there is something incredibly dynamic about a shared experience, yeah. that it forces sure. accountability. Um, people, a lot of times if you send one person to a conference, they come back and they're all hyped up. And everybody's mm -hmm. like, we don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So if the team can work. experience it, it's richer. Mm -hmm. um, so they can do that. And then if they look at the difference between being a member, non-member, we encourage them to join, mm -hmm. um, to be part of it because that unlocks a ton of other resources. The conference is certainly kind of the, the highlight of our year, but we have online learning, we have blogs, we have tons of resources, yeah. um, like the podcast. Um, right. that we make available and that um, they can benefit from. So outcomesconference.org is where they can go to get all that information to register, yes. check it out for yourself. And listeners, we just want to encourage you to do that. This is going to be a resource you are going to be amazed at the depth as well as the tracks and the stuff that God's put together. And I believe, Tammy, I just want to speak into this because you said, you know, we thought that this was going to be this and it's not, but God has never been surprised by this situation. And so I believe that he's walking that through and just showing us, ha, huh, I had something better for you all along. This is what it is and come and join. So I just want to encourage people to take this opportunity to, to jump on if they haven't, or maybe they haven't been to an uh, outcomes conference in a while. Maybe they've been members and haven't been able to travel. 
here's an amazing opportunity where you can do it from the comfort of your favorite office chair or uh, wherever you want to be. So um, outcomesconference.org. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks. All right. Well, let's get started with our interview. Oh, okay. We're and flipping the podcast. We're <laughs> flipping to the podcast that this will actually, this piece that we're going to record next, even though this is all recording to you guys out here on Facebook, uh, this part we record mm -hmm. next is uh, just for the outcomes people. But you get a sneak peek of uh, all Christian Leadership Alliance members will get a copy of this, but you're getting to see it early today in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, welcome to the Outcomes Conference podcast. We are your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. So privileged to do it. So glad you joined us today. We've got a real special privilege as we get the big kahuna today. Tammy Heim, President and CEO of the Christian Leadership Alliance, and she's in charge of the Outcomes 2020 Conference. I know she'd say she and her team, they're all pulling it together. But we wanted to be able to grab Tammy in the heat of the moment and say, Tammy, what's going on? in your leadership role, and let's just get some leadership perspective. You've had us gather information, Tammy Heim, from people all over the country. Mm -hmm. How about we gather some information on leadership from you? Tammy Heim, welcome to the Outcomes Conference podcast. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Martha. So good to be here with you. Well, we're excited to share you with the listeners. All right. So before we start talking about your leadership and your perspective of what God is doing at the Christian Leadership Alliance, first tell us how you keep your faith strong and how you keep your leadership Christ-centered. Oh, I, it totally comes from the time that I spend before the Father, um, the time that's spent in prayer, and uh, the, the practice of memorizing God's Word. Mm. That has been probably one of the most transforming things for me. I, I've always memorized verses, but the idea of dedicating yourself every week to learning scripture and really applying and then meditating on it. And um, what I find is as we fill up on that, that God, it just pours out whenever um, we need it and when others need it. Um, so I think that is where I need to be. I mean, it's the grounding in the word. And for me, the discipline of reading through the Bible every year has really been significant. This is the 10th year that I've gone on that journey and I've tried lots of different reading plans. Mm -hmm. um, I've consumed it in different ways just to keep the experience fresh. But I find that um, working your way and understanding the, the, the larger story and being able to tell the larger story, you know, from the Old Testament to the New, that God reveals things over and over again. In fact, I look at, sometimes I'll read a scripture that I've read so many times and it'll be like I've read it for the first time and God shows me something. It really is living and dynamic. And I've also found that as a leader, um, when I'm at that point where I need answers or whatever, I can open up where I am in the Bible on that day and God will speak to me wherever I am in that chronological mm. journey. So he's so faithful to meet us where we are. But I think as a Christian leader, we have to be deeply rooted in that um, mm. in order That's to lead well and to stay centered to his will and his purpose. I mean, I think that's the number one gift we give to the people that we serve is really being in lockstep, just like Jesus did. Mm, that's so awesome. And I hope that it's been inspiring for people to hear that from you because, you know, sometimes think, things seem like really great ideas, but making it real and saying, you know, this is the impact it's had on me is fabulous. So, so talk to us about the Christian Leadership Alliance. Explain a little bit about what it is and mm -hmm. then what kind of kingdom impact you are seeing as a result of what Christian Leadership Alliance does. Well, Christian Leadership Alliance started in 1976 when Ten Ingstrom, who was the CEO of World Vision International, um, he was known as a man of excellence. And it's interesting, he was looking at the financial structure within the organization. He said, you know what, I think we could be doing this better. So he hired the best, um, Ernst & Young at the time, to send in two of their consultants to take a look at everything. And I love this because God sent, them, sent, sent to him two men of faith right? Of course he did. Mm -hmm. And so they got involved and they went back and they said, we think we could help you if you'd let us. So Ted did the kind of thing that I've heard that Ted would do. He hired them to work yeah. for World Vision. And they basically repurposed everything about the financial structure and the reporting. And it ended up being a catalytic moment for World Vision International because now they had language and measurable impact 
that they could take and unlock generosity in major donors. Wow. And Ted was so excited about this. He said, what he's done for us is not just for us. And he charged the two of them to gather financial leaders together to share what they had done, held it freely, shared wow. what they had done there and said, and then you come and bring a best practice. And that is the DNA and essence of Christian Leadership Alliance. Leaders investing the best of what God gives them for greater kingdom impact. I love the community because they leave their egos and their logos at the door and they come in and they say, I'm going to sit beside you. And while some may think of us as a competitor, we're really on the same team. Yeah. Let me show you what I've learned. So in the Alliance, it's really biblically based. It's practical application. You hear what you need to hear, but then you become doers. And in the doers, the leaders are transformed and their organizations are transformed. Today, we represent um, 1,200 nonprofit ministries in the United States. We're primarily here in the U.S. And some of them are having some of the most global impact around the world, ones that would be highly recognizable. And, um, and we gather and we're constantly investing in each other, learning the best of what's out there so that they can, again, apply that to their ministries. So those organizations are having kingdom impact, but what is Christian Leadership Alliance getting to experience and see firsthand that is leading to some kingdom impact as well? Well, I think because we stand in the place where we unite those, mm -hmm. because it's very, it's very easy that when you're in a ministry or even a business that you get very isolated. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, here's where we are and here's our challenges and here's where we get stuck. But through the Alliance, we bring all of them together again, giving the best of what they know in each other, but then the opportunity. So a conversation may be, oh, you know, we're stuck on this. Someone who's in a very different kind of ministry said, I'm stuck too. Well, what do you think? Let's work on it together. Or they may say, I'm just stuck in this. And they go, ah, we figured that out. Mm. And I think that's the benefit because we represent so many different ones. Mm -hmm. um, I, the best biblical expression for Christian Leadership Alliance is in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7, where Paul's talking about within the body. Most think about the ear and the hand and all that, but above in four and seven, he said, there's many different ministries, but God's in all of them. There's many different activities, but the Lord is Lord of all. And then there's many different gifts. And we know that as leaders, we have different gifts, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all. So the intention in God's word is always that we would recognize that we have unique posts that we man, but we take what we know and those experiences are never just for us. Hmm. They're for everyone. And so we become an organization that creates the places and the spaces for that kingdom wisdom to be exchanged for even greater kingdom impact. So what are the things that drive you as a leader of the Christian Leadership Alliance? What is it that drives you to your knees? You've got about a minute and a half to answer this question. That drives me to my knees. Um, I feel like I'm on my knees a lot because I'm always amazed at how God works in and through the Alliance, the connections that are made, the collaboration that's made. And, and for me, it's just every day saying, God, um, what do you have for us today? What's the most important things that we need to tend to? And what is it that you are requiring of us, of the team, of me and the team, to be able to allow these opportunities for leaders to convene and connect? And then, um, then saying yes before I even know fully what it is that he's going to ask for us. So it's just trusting him every step of the way. It's practicing the things that we teach other organizations to do um, and just waiting for God to show up. I always feel like when I go to him, I'm like, Lord, here's my plan. And I know that it's probably plan B. Hmm. Show me plan A. And there are stories of stories about how he's shown us. Yeah, that's plan B. And I have a better one for hmm. you. And they're often unimaginable. I mean, even when I think about us taking an in-live conference event, it takes 18 months to plan and prepare that. And then God opens the door and said, now we're going to go to a digital environment that's right. in a time when that's all we have right now, right? Right. It's your only choice. Nobody's convening anywhere. And then to be able to navigate that, um, which is all unknown. I mean, we've not done this before. Mm -hmm. And just seeing how... God's like every day saying, I've got this and I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to bring this person along. We're going to orchestrate this this way. Right. And so 
in my needs. It's just I'm humbly here to serve. Lord, just point the way. And it's mm. great on your knees that you submit to the Lord, really just to get the, the, the blueprints from heaven for, for doing That's what you're right. doing. Hey, speaking of blueprints from heaven, we've got the privilege of really a, a gift from heaven, having I donate as one of the sponsors, as the premier sponsor of the Outcomes Conference podcast. Why don't you tell us a little bit about I donate? Well, they are the leaders in unlocking digital giving. You know, more and more of giving is going into that online platform, and they are the masters of making that happen. And they also make it an unforgettable experience for the donors. So they have a unique platform. They have a unique way that um, they monitor that activity. They have coaches. They really take you by the hand and lead you through the process. And then they open donating donations even beyond just, you know, what, you know, someone writing, wanting to just donate cash or everything. They're very creative in how they process that. So um, they're just leading the pack on it. And we're so thrilled that they're sponsoring the podcast and um, that they're a partner to many of our Alliance ministries. Well, you need to check them out online, idonate.com. That's idonate.com. All right, Tammy, let's then transition to your leadership journey. How did God prepare you for leading the Christian Leadership Alliance? Um, well, uh, first of all, he found me and saved me right the day after I graduated from college. Mm. So that immediately put me in a position to surrender to him this professional future that was planned for me. And he really did. He rewrote the text of my heart when I opened the book of my life before his eyes. And all the plans that I had made post-college were completely redone. And um, I thought I was ready to like, okay, I'm going to go be a missionary somewhere. What do you want me to do? And he said, no, 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 you've been equipped up to this point and we're going to use it. So he sent me on a professional journey and I went into a training program with a department store. I ran department stores for 22 years and then I thought I would live and die there. And then he took me out of that and um, I went into big box book retail. So my journey has really been one of business. So I did that. And from there, I took a little bit of a sabbatical um, to just spend time with my daughter before she left for college. And then I went into Christian publishing and that was the first bridge. So I was a marketplace Christian. I mean, I was ministering in my role in the marketplace. And then he took me into um, Christian publishing, which at the time, I mean, that's still for profit. But instead of just meeting people's needs and understanding needs that were emotive, which I learned through my book experience, now I had the opportunity to work with content that had life-changing um, mm -hmm. ramifications to those that would experience it. And then the digital stuff happened, right? Like um, it just got crazy. And so I stepped out of Thomas Nelson and I actually went to work for two years in a web tech firm where I got like the digital groove on mm -hmm. and I loved it. And it was a wonderful season of life because I worked with Christian communicators and churches and nonprofits. But I knew that I wasn't wired to consult. I mean, I loved it, but there's something about creating a plan and handing it off. I've always been in the adaptive place of here's a strategy and now we need to move here and we need to shift there. So God was so gracious. He opened three doors at one time. And when I went in and I found out about Christian Leadership Alliance, and I didn't even know about them at the time, mm -hmm. best kept secret, I was really impressed that all the business parts of my past, God was now going to use that so that I could now benefit ministries. Hmm. And it was like, I've been in boot camp for 40 years of yeah. my life for this moment in time and never realized that, you know, I'm in my ninth year of serving here. I had no wow. idea that I would get to do this. Um, that's amazing. So let's of, talk about the leader, your leadership style, your leadership ability. Is there a defining moment or something that was transformative in your life that helped you to, um, be the leader that you are today? Well, I, I think probably the most transforming moment was the point of my salvation hmm. and that that was a decision that would then impact everything that would follow it. Um, I would say that my whole life has been punctuated with times of great change and crisis. Hmm. And I think that those are the times where just like James says, you know, we're supposed to rejoice in those. 
I think during those seasons, I learned what it meant to let patience or endurance or perseverance, whatever translation you're looking at, work in me to mature me. And I remember always getting on the other side of something that was, I felt so epic and impossible at the time and thinking, oh, I don't know that I could ever do that again on my own, own strength. And then God presenting another one. So it's a series of seasons. So it's not just the one, mm -hmm. but I even look at the one that I'm in today. Um, you know, this charting of the unknown, this making this switch, trying to lead and organize people um, to move into this new direction and then just full of anticipation of what it is. So it's a testing of my faith. I think of, you know, in Romans 20, 20, there's that conversation about Abraham where it says he did not waver in unbelief at God's promises, but he was strengthened in his faith and he gave glory to God because he was fully convinced that whatever he promised, he would deliver. And then scripture says, and it was accredited to him as righteousness. And I think that's the journey. So we have this promise of eternity and we're on it. And then there are these things that we know about God. And as we go through them, we are strengthened in our faith. We learn to give him glory in them. And so it's really being at a place of standing fully convinced that he is who he says he is. And that as we submit to him daily as a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. he's got this and we get to work into it. It's the plans the father prepared for us before we even existed that we mm -hmm. get to walk out. And so that's the crisis. I mean, okay. it's a series of defining moments. And this is one right now. I would yeah. definitely say I'm in the midst of one right now. But you don't know how it comes out yet. That's the good news. It's still undefined. <laughs> All right, so let's just throw a fun question in there for a minute for everybody that's okay. listening to the, sh to the Outcomes Conference podcast today as we talk with Tammy Heim, uh, the CEO and president of the Christian Leadership Alliance. What's one thing your younger, you wish your younger you had known about leadership? Oh, my younger me. Well, that's always such a good question. I've always been in that process of, oh, do I write that? What would that letter to my younger self look like? Um, I think I would, I would say to myself, in those crises of faith, don't even hesitate, jump. Because we, we meet those, those times where we say, okay, there's a big decision here, and everything I make about this decision is going to be about what I believe about God. And the thing is, jump. And once you jump, it's easier to jump every time that comes because you've just seen God show up hmm. and you know what it is to be completely dependent on him. And that that is the safest place you can be as a leader, not knowing and really reckoning with your own neediness is really where God shows up the sweetest. In fact, when you go through this and you see all the ways God works and he starts to move, you think, how do I, I don't want to live another day without being in awe of that. But I also think as a leader, I would have said to myself, lean in and look. Today, I look for him in everything. So when we're challenged to pray without ceasing, it's this constant conversation that's like, what is this moment? And being able to step back and not react to what you experience, but respond from a place where you say, God, give me your eyes, give me your ears, to see this and then show me what to say. A little bit of taming of the tongue, but um, you know how that is. I mean, sometimes things just come up, but how do we really be in that place of trust and grace? So I would say jump for mm -hmm. sure. And then I would say, slow down where you are and look for God in every moment. Jump, but don't slow down while you're jumping. <laughs> No, you jump fast, jump fast, <laughs> but slow down in your response to the things right. that you experience in the world around mm -hmm. you That's and look great. for God in them. How would he, you know, what would Jesus do? Now you guys, we're about the same, you know, what would Jesus do? You remember that, yep. right? WJD. That's right. So what, what would he do? What would he say? How do I put on Christ in this moment? Well, I mm -hmm. know what he'd say right now. He'd say, we should thank I donate. Yes, we what should thank I donate. Yeah. So we can find them online at idonate.com. Tammy, why don't you tell the listeners again just a little bit well, about idonate? Again, I think that they have just come up with 
really mastering online giving right now. And um, in fact, there are many churches that are doing church online right now. Right. And um, that have seen it, that are saying they're seeing even increased donations because people are making that switch. And if you think about what we're going through um, at the time that we're taping this, right, is that um, that's all we have right now. Right. So to know that they are a trusted resource and that they create an unforgettable experience for those that are making the donations are really important right now. And they're great partners, great trusted partners within the Alliance. So mm -hmm. we're excited that they're sponsoring the podcast. Check them out online. idonate.com. Yes. That's idonate.com. They have apps that'll go into your website. They, they don't make it. They make giving easy. easy. All right, Tammy, the Alliance is a place where leaders come to invest what they know about leadership into other leaders so we can all become more excellent. What leadership idea or thinking would you like to make sure that you leave as an investment with our Outcomes Conference podcast listenership today? I think that um, we all recognize that we're in unprecedented times right now. Mm -hmm. And we really don't even know what, what's going to be on the other side of a global pandemic. We're, pandemic, we're sharing this experience together. Um, I think when we get farther down, we'll look back and there will be layer upon layer of revelation about what God was doing in this time. This will be a time that marks history. And I think what I would say is wherever you are as a Christian right now, whether you're in a nonprofit or whether you're in your, wherever you are, you are exactly where God intended you to be in this time. And you have an assignment and you have a post to man. And I think we've been entrusted with this time. I mean, this could have happened on any other time in all of history, but God had it happen now and he has us in place exactly where he needs to be. So as a leader, I would say, embrace it. Know that he has you there. It's not an accident that you're where you are, but you are exactly where you have been assigned. And so seek him. If you seek him, he will answer and he will respond. Understand your faithfulness in this moment. He's calling the body and the bride to do things that we never imagined possible right now. And so it's a huge opportunity to minister, to love, to be Christ. And um, what I would say, you, you need to be in that place to say, yes, whatever. Yes, whatever. Mm -hmm. Because we, we have no idea. I mean, I, I envision in First Peter... He talks about, you know, the hard times that are coming and that, um, you know, the angels wish they were in on it. Mm -hmm. And so I have this vision of like these stair, these stair steps all the way in the heavens and the angels are looking on at the drama that's unfolding in the world today and they're cheering us on and they're thinking, we wish we were there. Mm -hmm. You get to do this mm -hmm. because they know the outcome and we know the outcome, right? That God is victorious in it all, but we get to play a part. Play a part. We, a, we are there. What we a are there. Charge for the uh, for all of us yeah. to hear today. So thank you for that, Tammy. So let's talk about mentorship and discipleship. What kind of role has that played in you becoming the leader that you are? Um, I feel like God has been so just in time all my life, and He always put people in my life that, for many years and even today, can see more of the potential and the possibility that God has in my life than I can in that moment. So he's brought truth speakers and, and sometimes it's the criticism. It's, this is what you need to do. And so learning to open your heart to that, I think makes a big difference. So whenever anybody has something critical they want to say, or, you know, speak truth into my life, I always believe that that's coming from a place that they are believing and standing for the best in me. And even if it's a little harsh or whatever, I just try to be open and hear what it is that God's trying to communicate. So there have always been people in my life um, that have been tremendous sources of encouragement and God has used to give me the next word for the next step or the things that I need to know or to help shape or refine me in the process. So that whole mentoring thing is, is a huge gift to me and it's one that as a leader, I try to make and pay that forward and invest that in other leaders that I am privileged to work with. You know, you just made a point that I don't think I've ever heard anybody say before is taking um, what someone, you know, they're good intentioned, but it doesn't seem like somebody is mentoring or discipling you in that moment, right. but actually receiving it that way. They yeah. wouldn't say this unless they wanted something better out of me or my organization. And so they feel strongly enough to share that. That's powerful because 
perspective can change a lot. And so instead of um, always, it's not always that person you look up to or um, that you meet with weekly that disciples and mentors you, but it's also the, the constructive things that are around you. So thanks for sharing that. It's just a great new perspective. Well, and that's part of the community. And I will say that sometimes it will come in a harsh way where the person may not realize they may not be in the place that they're standing for you and giving your best, mm. but there's truth in that. Mm. And as leaders, we need to be able to receive it because instantly you want to defend it. Sure. Well, we did this and that's why we did it. But I think if we can just pause and we can receive it, then God can use many to mentor and disciple us to be more like him. Hmm. And in these times, like no other, that's a great lesson for all of us to be thinking about because we don't know where they're coming from, um, but we can be better leaders as a result. That's right. Tammy Heim with the Christian Leadership Alliance. Thank you so much for being on the Outcomes Conference podcast. Thanks for doing this live with us today. Thanks for being friends. We're just grateful to have you as a friend in our life. And thanks for being such amazing hosts and serving side by side with our us. Pleasure. And to you, our Outcomes Podcast listeners. Just want to make sure that we thank you for joining us today. We're just hoping that you grab something out of what Tammy had to say and dig deeper into your faith and connecting it to your leadership tomorrow. Be sure to visit ChristianLeadershipAlliance.org where you can stay up to date by subscribing to the Christian Leadership Outcomes online newsletter and the CLA Higher Thinking blog. And if you're not already a member of the Christian Leadership Alliance, What's keeping you from getting that done? Go right now to christianleadershipalliance.org and sign up, become a member, start transforming your organization today. Remember the wisdom in this podcast came to you by the way of someone else. So if you liked it, say so, and then share it with a friend. I'm Jim. I'm Martha. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Outcomes Conference podcast. We look forward to seeing you then.